on your whiteboard. Please tell me what is the name. How, um, please tell me who was defeated in order to start the uh, start the empire, uh, the republic phase. Who is defeated in order to begin the republic? Good. Who is it, Annie? The Etruscans on your whiteboard. Please tell me who's the gentleman that ends the republic. What is the name of the gentleman who ends the Republic? Oh, God, guys, you should just know this. Good. Who is it? Some of you are struggling on that. That's not good. Who is it, Sydney? Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar ends the Republic. On your whiteboard, what is the name of the dude who starts the Empire? Good. Jason. Augustus. Phoebe, did you see the difference? Yeah. Okay. Augustus. Augustus goes by two names. What is his other name on your whiteboard? Good. What is it, Hannah? Octavian. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Octavian or Augustus, whatever, is going to be what power couple in order to be the emperor of Rome post uh, Julius Caesar? Good. Good. Savannah, who is it? Cleopatra and Mark Antony. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the most important god to the Romans. Good. What is it, Abby? Jupiter. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the law code of the Romans. Good, good. What is it? Phoebe? Twelve tables. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is uh, the shortest aspect of Rome? What segment of Roman history is the shortest? Good. What is it? Cheyenne. Kingdom. On your whiteboard, please tell me what type of government does the Republic have? It is two words. So it's a very specific. It's two words. It's specific. Good. What is it, Emma? Representative democracy. Representative democracy. Guys, some you shouldn't be putting these bonds wrong. If I covered it yesterday, you should be getting about 90, 95% or 100% perfect. Because... It doesn't translate well to tomorrow, I can tell you that. On your whiteboard, please tell me what are the two highest uh, positions for regular people that are elected? What are the two highest positions for elected officials in Rome? Good. What is it? Now keep that. They're separate. They're from that. What is it? Uh, Madison. Consuls. Consuls. Oh. Okay, who can tell me how do consuls get selected? How does the whole process work? You have no idea. Okay, all right, here we go. Take a look over here, please. Okay. So, we are the people of Rome. We get to vote for people in the Senate. At its peak, Rome had about 150 to 200 people in their Senate. Okay, so the people vote, and we elected about 150 to 200 people to be in the Senate. Makes sense, correct? Just like we do today. Okay? Well, we don't have 150, but, you know, you get So, from the Senate, the Senate of 150 to 200 people, depending on when, they elect two of their leaders to then become consuls. So we vote for the Senate, and then the Senate votes for two consuls, and the two consuls go hang out with the emperor full time and try to influence him to think of not only himself, but of the entire empire. Does that make sense? Okay, so the councils are elected by senators, and these are your two most powerful senators that are elected in the councils. That's like your Senate majority leader and Senate minor uh, minority leader, yes? Okay, uh, Mark, Mark, no, not Mark, Paul Ryan is going to be your uh, majority leader, and then Nancy Pelosi is going to be your minority leader. Those are your two most powerful senators. Does that make sense? And they're the ones who have the most influence in our Senate. The two councils are going to have the most in Rome. Okay, does that help? Cool. All right, on your whiteboard, please tell me 
what is the name of the dude who's going to wander around Rome and tell people to not attend meetings, polytheistic meetings? Now, you need to have a couple words on your board. I only have a couple right answers. If you just throw one name on your board, it's a religious uh, aspect, not a historic component. What do you got? Alejandro, uh, nope, just kidding. What is it? Uh, Mongoy. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. On your whiteboard, tell me who started Christianity. Thank you, John. Good. Who is it, Jason? Paul of Zars. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the holy book of Christianity? Good. What is that, Abby? The Bible. On your whiteboard, please tell me who is the Messiah of Christianity? Good. Well, you're supposed to have multiple names on your board. You don't just write Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. You don't. Gives it a religious connotation. What is Madison? Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. All right, here we go. We got to go. Okay, so in your notes, um, especially if you are not a uh, Christian, you're going to want to write down the holy book is the Bible. You do need to know that the Bible is broken up into two major books. You can tell me what the two books are. What are the books, Rex? Old Testament, New Testament. Old Testament, New Testament. You do need to know the Old Testament is the same exact as the Torah, which is the foundation of both Judaism and Christianity, of course. And you need to know the New Testament follows around who wandering around? Jesus. So the New Testament is Jesus' component to it, uh, and that's what makes the Bible different from the Torah, so you do need to know that. Okay, so you do need to know that Jesus has 12 disciples. He has 12 disciples. If that is news to you, I would write that down. Now, why do you think having 12 disciples is a big deal post Jesus' death? What are they going to do? You can tell me. What are they going to do, Matthew? They're going to spread the word. Yes, they're going to be the ones originally going around. They're essentially what we would call missionaries. They're going to be your first missionaries going around and converting people to uh, Christianity. Now, you do need to know a couple of uh, things. So, Paul of Zars, did we get here yesterday? Okay. Yeah. Paul of Zars is the creator of Christianity. Okay? Now, he is Jesus' number two. Uh, number two. Who's Jesus' number one? Peter is his number one. Okay? Now, the reason why you need to know that, Peter is going to be like the egghead about Christianity. He knows like everything, right? He's going to be your first pope. He's going to be the one uh, kind of keeping people together and keeping Christianity going. Paul of Zars is going to be the one who's actively trying to recruit people and starts laying some of the foundation for what Christianity looks like today. Does that make sense? Okay. So, Paul of Zars is going to be your first one going out and above. He's going to attract, and you need to write this down, he's going to attract women and poor people. Why are women and poor people interested in Christianity? Why is that something women and poor people would be into? What do you got, Sarah? Okay, absolutely. That un, um, that forgiveness, you know, all of your sins can be wiped away if you apologize for it. Why else would women and poor people want Christianity? What is it? How is it different from other religions at the time? What do you got, Sarah? Yeah, you, it's not based on wealth status. Okay? If you have a lot of money, can you make yourself more important to God in Christianity? No, you can't. You can't. You're not allowed to buy your sins, pay for your sins, and get forgiveness in Christianity. You can't do it in other religions. You're not allowed to do it in Christianity. So is this appealing to uh, poor people? Yeah. They get the same treatment as wealthy people. Okay? So it's really attractive. Why women are attracted to it? Why? Layla? They're kind of like... They're what? They're like appreciated because Jesus was the born Yeah, they appreciate it. he was I lived the human experience. And men and women, regular people, non church people are treated equal, right? When you go into your church, okay, if you're a Christian, uh, do they treat you differently because you're a man or a woman? No, the word is the same for everyone. Now, especially if you're a Catholic, is there a hierarchy in that church you are not allowed to participate in? Yes. However, that's gonna come up later. Alright, so 
early Christians. Um, you do need to know that they believe in resurrection. Who's who has been resurrected? Jesus. Okay, it's kind of the mysticism of Christianity. He they believe that he went up and now he's with his father. Um, and then you're eventually going to see the core texts are going to be accepted. The Bible is the New Testament is the story of Jesus written down about 30, 40 years after the fact. So it's done in complete reflection at the end of all these people's lives. Interesting. Anyway, there's tons and tons and tons of stories about Jesus that did not make it into the Bible. You do know that, right? There's like 190 books, and they only picked, what, like 60? Yeah, they have a massive council uh, once Rome falls, and they make the decision of what goes into the Bible and what doesn't go into the Bible. And in that council, uh, Nazarene or something like that, um, they make Jesus divine, that he was just born a god. What? Uh, they tried burning them, because if they weren't going to agree with them, they didn't want you reading them. Most of them are gone. Some of them are still around because people kept kept them and stored them away. But most of them are gone. Think about it. with the Catholic with the Christian Church, which is really Catholic at this time. Um, would they want you reading alternative texts other than the ones they control and they feed you? No, of course not. So there's more stories about Jesus out there. You just haven't read them. What do you got, Rex? So the edict of violence does that make Christianity makes it legal so you can be open, openly Christian and walking around town. All of a sudden now we have things called churches where people are building these structures so people can pray together instead of sneaking around and doing it in basements and stuff like that. That's what's going to happen. All right, so early Christianity, especially pre-Edict of Milan, all the Romans are going to be going around killing the Christians. Why are the Romans killing the Christians? Think about it logically. Do not get all religious on me. Think about it logically. Why, Alejandro? They're not participating in a state religion. Do they really care that they believe in Jesus Christ as their Messiah? No, they don't care. They're just not going to these Roman things. So it's important that you understand that distinction. There you go. All right. Perfect. You're done with Rome. And Christianity, you're done with for now. We keep coming back to it. All right, here we go. Early Mesoamerican. Do you like Rome? That was cool. I like Rome. Told my husband I taught Rome today and yesterday, and he didn't care. He doesn't care. He really just doesn't care what I do. It's fine. I don't understand what he does. It's fine. All right, here we go. Mesoamerican society. Now, a lot of this is going to be kind of a refresh. So write down what you need, and there's a couple things I'm really going to stress. Is that fair? That's really light, which is why we're doing it. Now, we're in period two. Okay? Last time we talked about the Americans, we were in period one. <laughs> the problem is... There's not much of a change. Why isn't there much of a change from period one to period two? Why, Ricky? Isolation. They're in isolation. Yeah, they're just kind of hanging out. They're one of the few places where empires are going to go from period one to period two and die in period three. In Europe, when we talk about a civilization starting in period two, it ends in period two. When we talk about a civilization that starts in period three, it ends in period three. It's much cleaner. Why isn't as clean in the Americas? Think about it logically. Why? Why, Nathan? Uh, because there's like no written text on it. No, how is that going to keep them around longer? No, Rex. Like not everyone's trying to take over everybody. There you go. Yeah, their empires are pretty isolated. They're not killing each other. There's not a ton of rivalry. There's not a ton of food, correct? If there's not a ton of food. Can you wage a massive military? No. So there's no conquering of each other. People are just trying to survive over here. Okay. So that's the reason why there's not a ton of change. So when we talk about the Olmecs the Mayans. <laughs> We've already covered them once. So enjoy them round two, because there's not much that's going to change. Here we go. So, obviously we know that people are going to get there from walking across the Bering Strait, and they're going to walk down. We already covered this. So, hunter gathers. The Olmecs are your first people. You do need to write that down. They are your first, because there is a couple test questions on them, and we're going to cover it right now. The Olmecs, they are your first foundational civilization in the Americas. What does it mean to be a foundational civilization in the Americas? What does it mean, Tristan? There you go. Everyone is kind of based off their traditions, correct? They are the first. Okay? They like rubber. Why do they like rubber? Why do we call them the rubber people? We've already covered this people, but why? 
Yannick. They plant rubber, rubber trees all the damn time. What else do they make that's weird? Savannah. Big heads. They make big heads. So if I was you, I'd write rubber people big heads, like stone heads. I'm not asking you to write down everything brand new, like you've never heard it before, but some of this is on your test, by the way. All right. Okay, we obviously know that they are into farming. They have maize is the most important crop. Why is maize the most important crop to them? Why, Matthew? That's their staple crop. That's their staple crop. Why is that their staple crop? What does corn have that other vegetables don't have that's growing in the United States? Not in the United States, in the Americas. Like, they have tomatoes. They have cucumbers. What's the difference between that and corn? What, Tristan? has a lot more starch to it, absolutely, okay? It has a lot more carbs to it, okay? You do know that corn is not very healthy for you, right? Our body can't break it down, okay? So because our body can't break it down, it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of corn in order to have a fairly decent diet. So is that a good crop to base your entire civilization on? No. So people are very kind of frail. They're not going to live that long because the food is so hard. Um, and corn is not one you'd really like. Obviously, you need to put a big star. They have no draft animals, okay? They have no beasts of burden. What does that mean when we say they have no beasts of burden? Mia? Okay, and why, why is that important? Yeah, right now, because they have no animals, no draft animals, or no beasts of burden. They have to do everything themselves. All right. They decline. The Mayans. Now, a couple things you do need to know about the Mayans, of course. They're the ones who create zero. We already know this. That's why we're doing super quick notes. They create zeros. They build temples. They build massive temples. And you do need to know that. So if they don't have any beasts of burden, okay, what does that mean? How are those temples being made? How are those temples being made if they don't have any beasts of burden, Sydney? By hand. So, if these are massive temples being built by humans, is it important to them or not? It's very important to them. So they are building it. What is the name of the city? What do we call that city that the Mayans built? It was on your map that we turned in today. What is the name of that city, Mia? Yeah, it's T-City, whatever it is. All right, I'm going to write it down here in a second. Once I find it, there you go. You do need to know that name, City of T, whatever. This is the helm of the Mayans, Jason. It is going to be all over your test tomorrow for sure. Okay? So, you need to know that T City is the center of the Mayan world. This is where they have temples. Now, what is something unique the Mayans do that no one else does yet? Jason. Yeah. Well, they're kind of, yeah, they're one of the first to do that. No, they do something really cool. What do they do, Tristan? Yeah, they kill people. They kill people in the name of their gods. That's human sacrifice. You're going to want to write it down. Where do you think they do the human sacrifice, friends? What do you think, Nathan? On top of their temples. Yeah, on top of their massive temples that they built by hand. Okay? So, they do build massive temples in T-City. They are going to do bloodletting there, which is pretty uh, fancy. Uh, eventually, the Aztecs are going to mimic them as well. Uh, the Mayans are going to lay the foundation for the Aztecs. You do need to know that. The uh, Mayans are the foundation for the Aztecs. Okay, so a couple other things you need to know. They have a calendar still going. Okay, they have the stupid ball game, which they kill. It's all prisoners of war, and they kill the losing team. Okay. What? I know. Huh? They kill the win. I think they kill the win, losing team. Why would you want to win? Oh, ew. That was a terrible game. <laughs> Can you imagine just a bunch of people just, like, walking around, like, damn it, I don't want to win? What? What, the ball game? Losers immediately follow the match. Yeah, it's losers. Come at me, bro. Well, we were there at the same Wow, weird. Yeah, I'm saying. Whatever. Half of the participants are dying. So that's not a game I'd like to play, if we're just being honest. So, um, okay, so the Indian societies, if they're Indian, where are they? Andes Mountains, South America. Okay, we have the Chavin are still going. They're worshiping. They've got the maze cult and all that crap. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed the Americas. Wait, we don't even write Nah, I just know the Chavin are worshiping maze.
Hi. Guys, I hope you see that the Americas haven't changed like at all. Can we agree? However, it is on your test tomorrow. There's like five or six questions. What are the majority of the questions going to be on tomorrow's test? Rome. And that's why I paired Rome with the Americas. Aren't you grateful? Yes. Because the Han are humongous. And I used to teach them together, and oh my god, it was too much. It's too much. Because next week you'll see the Han. We have more notes for the Han than we do have Rome. So, not the best idea, so I gave you a little bit of a break. Tomorrow's test on the Americas, make sure you know T-City. Make sure you understand there's bloodletting rituals. Make sure you know that there's a ball game and that they use to execute... Um, and they have the calendar, they have the zero, all these things we've already talked about before, which is why I'm kind of skirting my way through because we're already aware of them, correct? All right. Our, um, Savannah, what do you got? Can you study our notes? Yes. Honestly, what I just covered is good. It's what you need to know. Now, if you have any clarifying questions, and I would go to your notes, because obviously when I taught in period one, I covered it more t in depth. Because uh, I do want to review a couple things here, but um, that's pretty much it. It's really like five or six questions, and most of them are visuals. So, not that bad. Tristan, what do you got, Tom? Sure. I know like sacking the growth is like the Huns moved in. And they're going to push all the civilizations, and everyone's going to run to Rome. Oh, the Visigoths are outside Rome. And they're like, it looks like chaos down there. They got lots oh, of stuff. So all that movement. All, so, okay, so. Well, the problem is that the fall of Rome, which we're really going to cover uh, in two weeks, um, is going to be, because the Huns are going to move over, and the Huns are awful. They're the people that Mulan's fighting. Let's get down to business. We've got to defeat the Huns. Yeah, okay, anyway. Don't judge, okay? I know I can't sing, okay? But it breaks up the day, okay? Anyway, so the Huns are going to be terrorizing Asia. So all the Asian populations are going to start heading west. So then all these weird Asian people are going to be heading into western ground, and Europeans are like, who the hell are these people, right? Because they're starting to get displaced. So they're running away. The Asian people are running away from the Huns. The Europeans are running away from the Asian people. And so all of these non-Europeans are running into Rome, being like, Rome, save me. And Rome's like... Where the hell are you people coming from? <laughs> and there's just too much going on, and there's too many new people, and there's too many com people completely coming to Rome. Because if you are fearful of your life, where are you going to run to? To the biggest empire. To the biggest empire with the biggest, baddest military. And then all of these people are, like, crossing the borders, and Rome's like, holy shit, what am I going to do? <laughs> and then, because we've had 200 years of Pax Romana, Roman peace, that the Romans have just been defeating everyone, after 200 years of that, if you're in the 148th, Emperor, how sharp are your skills about how to deal with a crisis? Not very sharp. No, because they're idiots. And all they do is party all day and make stupid rules, and that's all they do because there's no conflict. They don't have anything to really pressure themselves. So they have inept rulers who have now this massive crisis, and so they're like, I don't know what to do. The only thing I'm good at is partying. So, Rome Fox in 410, when the Visgoths, who are like, it looks like a shit show down there. <laughs> I'm going to take it. So they come in and raid Rome. Ta-da! That's the end of Rome. <laughs> there we go. The Visgoths are going to conquer Rome. They're going to sack it four times. The Visgoths. The barbarians. Apparently it's Oh, yeah, they, they had no ability. Because as soon as all these chaos people are pushing into the borders, think about it. Do the Romans have enough to control their slave population and control all these new people coming in? No, and that's why it falls. It's just complete chaos as soon as people start pushing in. Matthew? No, it's not on your desk. Just be aware it exists. Just put it back there. If, they, if AP asks you a question about the mocha, we're all screwed. <laughs> I can't really tell you that much about it either if it makes you feel better. They're just kicking it. I assume they worship corn too. They're in the Andes. Maybe trading a little. Probably decentralized. They're communists. They're communists? No, that's the Incas. The Incas are straight up communists. The Incas are cool. We gotta get there. They lay the foundation. The mochi's the foundation of the Incans, but we only care about the mochi because they're the foundation of the Incans. When we get to the Incans, you will know all about the Incans because they're awesome. I'm done. Do you take out your focus on your spice?
Yeah, let's take out your focus in the spies. Let me film some stuff for you. You are in a good spot for tomorrow's test, honestly. However, um, I will tell you, you've got one, two... Not too bad. Three. Three primaries, which is very nice. How surprising. You got one. One map. And you got one, two, three. Three pictures and one chart. So, not too bad. I don't think it's that bad of a test, honestly. I think it's kind of friendly. It's got lots of pictures. I even, in, so I made this test uh, this past weekend, and um, I included some of my AP art new knowledge. So, you don't care, fine. It's, it's fine. I just thought you'd be proud I'm learning so. too. Thank you so much, Amari. I am so proud of everything you do, and it's so nice that, you know, you can shine a little shine on me. Did I take the test yesterday? No, I did the first ten questions. I got one I got one wrong because it was kind of like, well, that wrong answer is not wrong. You know, totalitarian isn't wrong, but ceremonial is better. No, I know, but he said ceremonial is better because it's so ornate. Well, no, just look at the next question because then uh, there was no answer that said it's ornate. That was like the one we learned at the YouTube. I know, I know, I know. That's the only one I got led astray on. Wait, which one was that? The one with the it was on the first page. Was it the it's like the yeah. third one. The, the, the ambient. A little. That's what you tell us. So you're just looking at it and it's it is the answer is not utilitarian. It was ceremonial because it's so ornate. Yeah, but it has like it's like an anteater, isn't it? Yeah, but I know it's because the detail in You want to put that much detail on the like You might take other ones. That's why it's ceremonial. He's right. That's exactly what Ren said. So I got that one wrong. I contested. He didn't care. What do you got? Take out your spies. Let's look at spies. What do you need? For a republic, two economics for a republic. Uh, the republic is the one, um, they're going to conquer Carthage and open up the Mediterranean Sea. The republic does that. Wait, wait, wait. You need economic for monarch? Monarch, two Oh, okay, so it can cover the republic. Yeah, they're the ones who are going to defeat Carthage, which means deletes their major rival, economic rival. Um, and what else is another thing we could say for it? What do you got, man? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Economic. Huh? Wealthy people are being held accountable in the Republic. What do you got, Saran? Saran. Damn it. I interactions from monarchy to Republic. What do we got? Layla, help me out. Some of you got a long night ahead of you. The big um. By the when they the land. Okay, yeah, I mean, just know that uh, pre-Julius Caesar, about 95% of land is owned by about 12% of the population. Is that a big deal? 95%. Yeah, 95% of all land is owned by 12% of the population. Would that be an I? That would be an I, yeah. What do you got, Alejandro? Uh, like the Greeks, the Greeks are not known for their farming. <laughs> Unlike the Greeks, there you go. They're an agricultural based society. Why? Uh, what's the most important crop? You can even argue. Why is the conquering of Carthage a big deal? That could be interactions as well, Matthew. Yeah, they need the wheat stores. All right, what else do you need? What do you got, Hannah? All right, cultural. What do you got? Help me out, Sam. All right, yeah, you're going to see a new military mandate. That's fine. That's fine. Yes, we're working on it. What's another one we can get? Matthew. Uh, Roman literature was heavily influenced by the Greeks. There you go. Roman literature works heavily. What do you got? 
Stoicism works. You can also argue um, the religion is also cultural. Religion is cultural, and you can say that's based on the Greeks. You can even throw down Jupiter's the most important god, whatever you want. What else do you need? What do you got, Madison? I need um, two, but I need economic for tri the transition from the Republic to the Empire. Economic for that? Yeah. Didn't we cover that one? No, we didn't. No. Uh, okay. Um, you can say opening trade with uh, the Han. Opening oh, trade with the Han. Uh, economic for transition from Republic to Empire. They're opening up trade with the Han. And then I need... Um, Oh, we're getting double duty here, yeah, huh? Yeah, I need economic for the mines. <laughs> economic for the mines. They are going to be trading with uh, the... Uh, they are going to be trading in both North America and South America. We see mine goods in both North America and South America. Isn't that cool? Because when you think about the Americans, you think they're pretty isolated. They're actually trading. There's over, like, 350 tribes in what we call the United States and Canada today, and they're all trading with one another. We have the proof, the evidence and the proof and stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. The mines are the ones really connecting North America and South America, though. Why are the mines the one connecting North and South America? It makes logical sense. Why, Rex? Because they're in Central America. Okay, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. That, no, that does make logical sense as well. But why? What else? Why else does it make sense that the mines are connecting North and South America? They're in Central America, which does make sense. Are they also the largest civilization, the most advanced civilization? So it makes sense that they'd be the ones with the largest trading connections, right? All right. What do we got? Uh, Mia. I need another economic for transition from Republic to... Who can help me out with another economic from transition? Wyatt. Uh, low cost of slave labor with There you go. That's a good one. Uh, cheap slaves made the Romans heavily dependent on slaves. Think about it. If you had a cheap, if you could buy a person to do all of your work, I know that's a horrible thing to think of because we don't think of it this way, but wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't you buy someone to do all of your work? Think about it. You would, totally. You would, totally. Thank God we don't have slavery. I'm not condoning it, but think about it. If it was legal and everyone was okay with it, would you have a slave? Yes. Some of you may even have housekeepers and gardeners and all that stuff, all you fancy people. Okay? So, what do you got, Mia? Um, like, you know how you were talking about the stuff for cultural from transition from the public to empire? Yeah. What if you put that stuff in like that? It's a, there's a heavy overlap. Don't even worry about it. You're okay on that. Okay? What do you got? I have a question. Sure. How, so, it doesn't say anything about like the vehicles and the they don't have the wheel. They walked. They walked or they carried stuff. People were significantly thinner than they are today, yes. Probably more. You can do that pretty quick. Because my husband's bro a bike uh, like broke down on... He rode one uh, from one side of the Gandhi Bridge to the other. Isn't that the long bridge? What's the long pretty bridge by Clearwater? Whatever bridge that is. And he got to the other side, literally did a U-turn on the other side, and his uh, wheel exploded. <laughs> so he had to walk the eight miles back with his bike. And that only took two hours, two hours and 15 minutes. So imagine how far you could really walk in a day. Walking like 10 miles. It's eight, that's nothing. It's two hours. hours. Ten hours. Ten hours in a day, you can really get far. I don't know why we are at this point, but <laughs> we are. Yeah, oh, there you go. That's wow, really? Yeah, you can go like that's 40 miles in 10 hours. That's crazy. Yeah, it's the same. Gross. It's gross. <laughs> well, they're probably, like, they're probably walking a bit slower if they're holding trade items. And, I mean, they are walking through woods. It's not like they're on a path. So, so they got to, like, gonna, step over, like, like stuff. Like, like How did we get here? <laughs> How did we get here? Saran. Um, when we talk about, so may I see your spice? You might not have it. Oh, that's not good. Um, so like nicknames, um, nicknames don't really worry about. The fun fact is like one big thing you should know. Like the monarchy, you should know it's a kingdom, correct? 
for our, your fun fact for the Republic is representative democracy. It's like the big pieces of information. Does that make sense? For fun fact for the uh, Empire, I would write dictatorship. You are good for your test tomorrow. I've been looking at it. I mean, it's pretty fair. Look at your focus. What do you got? Well, I have a question. Sure. The transition from the Republic to the Empire, isn't that the exact same thing as just the Empire? But they're just more for the Empire? Wait, wait, what? Isn't this part like the exact same as the Empire? They're very the similar, of course. Because so it's not like totally. Take, you can can't copy the same ones over and over again, no. There's plenty of evidence. It's Rome. There's tons of stuff we know. It's a huge chapter of your book. You can come up with unique things that do overlap. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. We got Rex. Uh, for, so the two main rules we really need to know are uh, Caesar, Augustus, and Octavian. Yes. Those are the two big players. And Caesar Augustus was, was he? Caesar Augustus? Augustus Caesar is how we say it. Oh, yeah, Augustus Caesar. Was he the monarchy or monarchy? He's Empire. Octavian and Augustus are the same. Julius Caesar. Oh, Julius Caesar. Yeah, Julius Caesar is the end of the Republic. Because everyone's democracy, and then he's like, you know what, screw it, I'm just going to kill the emperor and declare myself dictator for life. That's the end of democracy. So he's centrist is all again? Ah, Sula, but you don't need to know. Worry about that. Just know that the emperor tried to banish him there. Yeah. Well, tomorrow we have a test, Avi, 25 questions, multiple choice. And then on Friday we have a map, and we're starting China. We're going to do Confucianism, Taoism, legalism. I know, I'm so excited. I love the Han and the Chin. Um, the Chin are pretty cool. They are jerks. Like mean. Yeah, you speak out of line, they just slit your throat. Why? Why are they going to be so hard? Why are the Chin going to be so harsh? They are our first next civilization. What happened before? Sarah? Kind of. What, was, what do we call the period right before the Chin come back? Because we left off in China. What happened, Matthew? Yeah, remember it was complete chaos for about 200 years. No government could take over once the um, Zhao fell. So we have the warring states. So the Chin are the first ones to come back. So they have to be harsh? So they have to do with something. Hell yeah, man, they had to go hardcore, and they do. And the reason why they decline is because they were too hardcore. Really? Yeah, once they get everyone under control and everyone's doing what they're supposed to do, they're like, screw you, man, we're doing what we're supposed to do, and you're still a jerk, and that's why they kill. Huh? Oh, well, yeah, but, like, the Chin are, like, super big jerks on their own people. Like, they're just ruling Chinese. They're Chinese ruling Chinese, and they're just, like, killing everyone. The Mongols are, like, jerks to everyone outside the Mongols. Yeah, like, if you're a Mongol woman, for instance, Mia, you're not going to get raped. But if you are, like, a Chinese, a uh, Persian, you're going to get raped by hundreds of Mongols. Preference, baby. There you go. They don't even like their own women? No, not really. Okay. They don't have real value for women at all, but they don't rape their own women, like, in a large scale. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, I assume they still rape. I mean, if you're, like, okay with rape, I don't think you're going to be super, like, oh, my God, not, like, you know, like, violent raping, I see, but, like, I wouldn't do that to a woman in my clan. Like, I assume they're still raping, just not massive scale, you know? Is that too much in the morning? Like <laughs> <laughs> They're the Mongols, man.